I spoke to her, he muttered after a long silence. I told her she might fool me, but she couldn't fool God. I took her to the window. With an effort, he got up and walked to the rear window and leaned with his face pressed against it. And I said, God knows what you've been doing, everything you've been doing. You may fool me, but you can't fool God. Standing behind him, Michaelis saw with a shock that he was looking at the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, which had just emerged, pale and enormous, from the dissolving night. God sees everything, repeated Wilson. That's an advertisement, Michaelis assured him. Something made him turn away from the window and look back into the room. But Wilson stood there a long time, his face close to the window pane, nodding into the twilight. Then, as Dr. T.J. Eckelberg's faded eyes came into sight down the road, I remembered Gatsby's caution about gasoline. Over the ash heaps, the giant eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg kept their vigil, but I perceived after a moment that other eyes were regarding us with peculiar intensity from less than 20 feet away. I followed him over a low, whitewashed railroad fence, and we walked back a hundred yards along the road under Dr. T.J. Eckelberg's persistent stare. But above the gray land and the spasms of bleak dust which drift endlessly over it, you perceive, after a moment, the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg are blue and gigantic. Their irises are one yard high. They look out of no face, but instead from a pair of enormous yellow spectacles which pass over a non-existent nose. Evidently, some wild wag of an oculus set them there to fatten his practice in the borough of Queens and then sank down himself into eternal blindness or forgot them and moved away. But his eyes, dimmed a little by many paintless days under sun and rain, brewed on over the solemn dumping.